Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Feminist Talk Back, which is a, um, and this episode is a slimmed down version of the original show. We had planned here with four guests, but unfortunately, um, with the time zones, things got complicated and a few things came up. But I always enjoy sitting down with Michael Rollins, like row, row, row your boat, Rollins, as I actually say that in my head now to make sure I say the right one. (laughs) That's funny. That was like my primary school. Good. (laughs) Your primary school was in my head. (laughs) My primary school was was always uh, was that Limp Biscuit song. Um, Oh, the the Roland. Oh, how did it go? I can't. No, not Limp Biscuit. Yeah, yeah, Limp Biscuit. He uh, roll roll roll. Yeah. Anyway. That's yeah, I was thinking it. she did it all for the nookie, but that's not the one. No, no, they, they got, uh, <laughs> keep on rolling, baby. This, oh. You know, the one that, whatever well, that's it is. That's pretty cool. That's better. Yeah. Than row, row, row was, your boat. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to talk Michael rowed the boat ashore. There you go. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, that would be annoying. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Well, but when it's sung by Bobby Michael. Darren, it's totally awesome. You're just like, oh, yeah, thanks, Bobby. I, yeah. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so getting on with, hey, uh, show. Yeah, let's do <laughs> What's the, How does that work? Let's go. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, we'll just have those guests on at a later date. Actually, I've got a couple of people now that are um, I'm trying to get on for a second time because of scheduling conflicts, but that's okay because you're more than a cons- <laughs> Oh, yes. You're more than a consolation prize. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm, you're I'm, so much I'm fun to talk to. Yay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, tell us a little bit, actually, um, we were going to talk about Milo, but maybe to set things up, and this is in the reverse yeah. order we discussed in the um, before we went on air, but you've just done a video about online abuse. So for the people who are listening, tell us a little bit about what inspired that video, um, how it came about, and what reaction you've gotten from it. Uh, well, it came about because I was talking to Go Fem Yourself. We were just having a chat, and she she kind of just kind of floated the idea, I suppose. And I was like, holy crap, that's an awesome idea. Uh, I, I'd not kind of thought about it uh, before. And uh, I, because I talk about the sort of stuff that I talk about in the video a lot whenever I get the chance, really. <laughs> like I'll, I'll talk about it in, in Hangouts or when or whenever, you, you know, I'll, I'll write about it on Facebook or, or, or Twitter or whatever, you know. So I've I've talked about that sort of stuff a lot. And I thought it would be valuable to kind of, bring it all together into one place where someone could come and, you know, if they were having uh, trouble with online abuse or cyberbullying or whatever, they could come and they could watch my video and maybe get some, uh, some tips and, and, and just some like solidarity with, with someone else who's been through what they're going through, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I just thought that would, that would be kind of valuable. And, and I've had a really good response from it I, I made it very clear at the beginning of the video that this is not a place for people to come and and say oh you know harden the fuck up you snowflake um so if people were going to do that i was just going to delete their comments straight away and i haven't really had any comments like that um so either either the warning worked or they haven't seen it yet i don't know but the people who have commented have been have been really uh you know really really good comments like there's some nice discussion going on there and uh and a couple of people have even asked to to kind of mirror it because they really liked it so so it's on a couple of other channels as well now um yeah can i mirror it too of course you can yeah 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 totally i'll have to space it out because <laughs> i've been a mirroring machine of late and i think my viewers <laughs> expect some original content from me from time to time so i gotta space this yeah. out <laughs> just claim it's yours it's fine maybe yeah, that's great video the- i did <laughs> yeah. So here's something, because I don't think people who, who watch videos but don't make them, you can't experience what it's like to be a dog pilot until it happens. So do you yeah. remember, even if you don't remember details about the first time, your general like experiences of it and what you remember about it? Because I found it, and initially, it's quite stressful the first time it happened. So do you remember yeah. at all about your early days? Uh, and then can you compare them to how you are now? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, I suppose the first time it sort of happened was when I started making content about Sargon of Akkad and I started receiving a lot of hate from his fans. Uh, and it was very surprising because I'd not, you know, I was kind of new to the platform. So uh, for me, it was quite a big surprise receiving all of this hate. Um, and especially when, because the thing is, uh, with, when you're a newer YouTuber, right, you haven't got a lot of a lot of followers on not a huge fan base. Um, the hate that you you get is pretty, uh, you know, it, it far outweighs any of the the affirmation that you 
could potentially get because uh, the the spotlight has kind of been shone on you, right? You've 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 the attention has been brought to your video or your channel or whatever by this big YouTuber who's got uh, you know three hundred thousand subscribers or whatever, and and so so the followers will be there and they'll be making that, but there's no attention. Uh, you don't have you know people being nice to you because there's the it, the way that YouTube works it's it's difficult to get that especially when you're new you know so um so it can be quite a shock you know uh so when i first received all that i and you know because i was new i obviously argued with a lot of people in the in the comment section you know people who uh you know to an outsider would seem like they were at least looking for a proper discussion when in fact they're not really they're just they're there to troll that's the you know they're there to to yell at you and call you a piece of shit because you criticize their lord and master and so that um that experience the first little while until until i um was noticed by uh i think it was the skeptic feminist that kind of noticed me first and and kind of brought me into the community i suppose um yeah i received a lot of hate and it was it was challenging <laughs> um and then that was that was kind of nothing compared to what happened when uh boring the bear man uh targeted me um yeah and yeah and that was was even more of an experience but uh, by that time i was kind of used to the whole sort of thing anyway and i was having a great time just fucking blocking people left right and center and deleting comments and laughing about that i was censoring them and all that sort of stuff so at, at that point like i say it was it was a bit more i I wasn't having too much of a tough time with it because i was having a lot of fun actually <laughs> um but that was that was a good maybe a year into my social justice youtube um uh you know career Your i suppose career career <laughs> so, yeah i guess you get paid well, for it actually now. i've uh, my youtube channel has earned me 450 dollars oh, oh, oh i know pretty sweet right sweet, new zealand yeah. dollars though so that's like what a three or four american dollars i i, I have the pound yeah. and the euro memorized in uh, okay that's even worse not it's like 35 easy. pence or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't keep all the currencies in my head. Just the one. All right. So. <laughs> okay, good. No, my experience was um, sort of similar in that I was making atheism videos. And, you know, because I started making atheism videos. <laughs> this was before things kind of kicked off on YouTube. But I just mm. thought, well, I, you know, feminism is sort of, you know, there isn't much left to debate. <laughs> the whole, oh gosh, you know me and my little, I guess, academic jokes bubble. on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and you get out of, you know, um, you get off of campus, and then you're like, oh, actually, there's still a lot of attitudes out here that we need to discuss. And so I'd always had, you know, I'd had the idea to have feminist atheist critique, and then uh, the more I got into feminist critique, the more criticism I got. I don't remember who targeted me. I, you know, I had my run in. I guess it was Thunderfoot. It's when um, things started kicking off with Thunderfoot when he um, doxed um, Laughing Witch in a video about the, right. her their information. And he, for some reason, put my video link. We had an argument in the comments uh, where he was said something about – well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we had a, we had a yeah. dispute in the comments. He put a link to my video just without any context in that video. And from that, I got a heap of her of, of dogpiling. And the first time you get it, yeah, it's really overwhelming because you're, especially as a small channel, you're used to maybe getting five or six comments, maybe, you know, a conversation yeah. that would build up your comments to about 20. And at that point, you can really interact one-on-one -on -one with people. In fact, that's kind of the nice thing about a smaller channel is that you have such a small audience, you actually can have one-on-one -on -one interactions. And I think once you start to clear into the thousands, it's just not, especially when you've got a you know, if you've got a lot of haters coming over, um, you're just managing your comments. You don't have as much time for those interactions. And so when you're used to interacting people, like just with you, you know, you start to debate with them because that's the mode that you're in as a smaller channel. And it's just overwhelming. It will eat up all of your time. And you're always going to find yourself being insulted and on the defense and being misrepresented and have accusations or assertions thrown at you without any evidence, you know. And so you have to try to clean and up And a bunch that of now. stuff like... A whole bunch of uh you know what about this you know i was really new to the feminist community so people would people would um you know throw these things that were obviously things that have been talked about in the past or you know like uh, things that they're they're used to talking about like like anita sarkeesian or you know listen and believe or 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 other things that that 
that they have problems they have with the feminist community and i'm just like i have to quickly google what the hell they're talking about to, to be able to respond to what they're saying and yeah. i'm like oh god you know it's uh that, that's interesting as well <laughs> And I know, I, the, I, at least my experience, the longer I've gone on with this, especially when it comes to feminist issues, you have to decide, I think, well, I have to decide very quickly if someone's a sincere interlocutor or they're really just there to troll me. You know, for instance, like just on Twitter uh, yesterday, I think it was, someone I had, had tweeted a Vox article about Trump's expenses as president because he's been flying to Florida every weekend so far. Right. And this person came back and tried to challenge me. So I found an article on the Washington Post that cited a specific government study where they got the estimates from. And with the person just turned around and said, you expect me to read something from the Washington Post? And I just went block. <laughs> I honestly, if I can present you with a link to the document, you know, they're describing the document where they're getting the numbers because you're challenging the fact that, you know, he's the taxpayers are paying for this. And you're not willing to look at that evidence, then no matter what you say, I don't care anymore. <laughs> you're just you spare me to look at the Washington Post? Here, read something from Breitbart. Yeah, InfoWars, come on. Yeah, yeah, um, come on. Jesus. And, and this oh, is man. feminist because um, there's this is something that I think a lot of people on the progressive side go through. But obviously, there's a there's a feminist angle, a feminist critique, and these types of dogpiling behaviors that have ringleaders who deny responsibility mm -hmm. for their ringleading. And yeah. the effort there is to silence feminists, um, both men and women. And so, yeah. I actually had a um, I had a comment. Uh, I had a had a had a question on my Ask FM. And I think it was after I'd finished this video and I, it was a well-meaning question. The guy, he asked me a lot of questions and I, I, I really appreciate it. So, um, uh, so he, he asked this question about, uh, he said, you like, like the video and what would I say to guys like Chris Reagan or uh, whoever else who would say, you know, I've received death threats as well. Just get over it. You know, that's the, this is welcome to the internet. Um, and my response to that ha was, and always has been, you know, it's, it's, you've got on you've got one thing on one hand you've got a guy with 300,000 subscribers getting the occasional or you know getting uh you know negative feedback but a wash a sea of gleamingly positive feedback from the rest of his audience and then on the other hand you've got a small channel which has got next to no subscribers which like i say will not have a lot of people there to affirm you know, give positive affirmation and then a huge wave of bullshit just waving over that. They're, they are completely not, there's no, you can't compare the two. They're, you know, so to say, hey, look, I receive negative, you know, stuff as well. That, that's just it's like, yeah, yeah, it's not comparative at all. <laughs> there's just no way to do that. And it either shows, it either shows, um, you know, a lack of, uh, of understanding how it actually feels because they've never experienced that sort of thing or like because one of the things i say in in this video is that that it's a it's an attempt to trivialize the experiences of the victim to um to to rationalize the things that they are saying or doing you know so to, to make it seem like or, or either to make themselves feel better about the things that they're saying so that you know they're saying this stuff but it's actually not so bad because for this reason and this reason and this reason, you know, they're, they're justified in doing what they're doing. And, uh, and if you are a person that doesn't do that, you know, you're not necessarily a, you're not taking part in the harassment, but you uh, parrot that sort of rhetoric, you are, um, you are um, allowing that, uh, that behavior to continue by your tacit acceptance or rationalization of the things that they are doing. And it's, you're just as bad and part of the problem as as any as as the harassers themselves. That's you know. Yeah, you're normalizing death threats. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and the thing is, you know, depending on where some people have more issues with anxiety, or they have, for instance, children that they worry about their safety. So I don't want to judge anybody for taking off a of, turning a video to private or taking down their channel. But where I was, you know, in my life, I'm older. I'm more confident. I really don't give a shit what people who I have no respect for think of me, you know? And yeah, so yeah, yeah. once you get over, this is the key, which is once you get over the dogpiling, and it might take a few waves of it, you just realize that that's the kind of, that's all they can do to you. And if you can find a way to filter those people out because they're not producing anything constructive, it doesn't have to stop you from getting your voice out.
Yeah, and yeah. that's what I think, you know, the people around in the sort of video links our social network uh, here on YouTube. The, you know, we're growing as a community because of the attacks on people who've never been attacked before. And we talk to them and then they we connect with them and end up building more of a community than we had that before. Yeah. The pilot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, we've, I've made quite a few friends from people that um, have been targeted. And so we've, we've been able to talk um, and you know, connect, which is really cool. Um, so in, in that sense, you know, <laughs> it's kind of good. The whole online abuse thing, of course, leads into the the second most exciting thing that happened in my life this week and i just wanted to okay so when i go i i, I like a filet mignon if i go out for steak i'm gonna get a filet mignon and if i had it once there's a place in manchester it's a i don't know the name it's a hotel but it has the best steakhouse in the city it's crazy you go to a hotel restaurant and then you get this amazing steak and i had okay. a filet mignon there it was so amazing that halfway through, I started to slice it into increasingly thinner slices because I wanted to drag out <laughs> the last <laughs> half of my steak. And that's how I felt the last few days watching Milo oh. tumble in an almost Shakespearean tragedy-like way from right. a glittering height to uh, oh. the pig's shit, you know, um, part of the farm. So, yes, yeah. um, one, let's talk about Milo um, first. Let's go back I didn't to think about the Shakespearean aspect of it. That's fantastic. <laughs> he did. He said himself. It totally up. is. <laughs> yeah. He's like a fellow man. He's just, he's just gone. Yes. And now he's strangling his wife with a pillow. <laughs> is that a fellow? Fun fact. There, yes. <laughs> fun fact. It's really difficult to actually do that. Like we were. I was talking about this with my flatmates once, and I was like, it doesn't seem like you'd be able to, you know, just like suffocate someone with a pillow and we were like do you want to try it and i was like okay so i'll tap your arm when i need to breathe again and he got on top of me and that's hot right and and pushed the pillow into my face as, as hard as he could and i just breathed normally through the pillow <laughs> it's it's porous you do I, I don't understand how you could maybe maybe they were p pillows are made out of different things back in shakespeare's day but yeah maybe down feathers are more pliable and face shaping yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, if it was like memory somewhere. foam, that might yeah. that might be a bit more difficult as well, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> so Bill yeah, that's right. sorry, what? Uh, the Bill Maher appearance. Oh Jesus! So we're gonna go back. I know it feels like ages ago. So much has it happened. Does. It was Shit. only like a week ago. Mm. Oh, I actually so, saw it last night. No, no, you, 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 you talk about that, and then I'll, I'll bring it up after that. Go. Oh, okay. Well, so yes, um, as many people know, Milo was on Bill Maher. And I, my problem was not that he was on Bill Maher, but that Bill Maher did really nothing to challenge his ideas. And in fact, in the overtime segment with Larry, the famous now one with Larry Wilmore, where he oh. has a quick back to him, he, you know, right. Milo tries to claim that there's some well known statistic about transsexuals involved with sex crime and Bill Maher, who I think in only in the last like week or two was going on and on about evidence when it comes to the issues of immigrants and Muslims or whatever. And we're just looking at the evidence. He just went, Oh really? That's a statistic. Okay. I'm not going to question that at all. He really was the biggest marshmallow in terms of, he did more to interrupt, uh, get Milo to not interrupt his guests than he did to challenge his ideas. And that was, for me, the most disappointing thing uh, about that appearance. Yeah. He, um, it was just stupid because, like, he, he defended bringing Milo onto the show by saying that, you know, it's, there's, it's the best thing that can, you know, that, that we can do is if this guy is as bad as, as we, people say he is, then he'll be exposed on Friday night. But he did nothing. He fucking just bent over and stroked his balls it was it was it was embarrassing he 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 didn't challenge him on any that they bonded over their hatred for muslims basically and mm -hmm. then like in the overtime section where they were talking about uh the transgender bathroom issue which milo basically said that all transgender people are child abusers who want to you know abuse children in bathrooms when there's never been a case of someone of a transgender person uh, abusing someone in a bathroom that, that just never has so this i read this that there was that, one 
Oh, oh was, wow. That's a kind of event that happened in a bathroom where there was but, what kind of assault it was. But yes. So one in like all of human history or whatever. Since we've got records. Is it's, like, it's like it's equating a dude who dresses up as a woman so he can get into the bathroom so he can abuse a child with a person who's, uh, you know, uh, has their their gender identity, their their identity as a person has is different from their outer you know, physical appearance. So they are, you know, being yeah. a woman that way. They're, they're, they're just not the same thing, <laughs> you know? And then Bill Maher goes on to say, oh, sorry, go for it. You're not going to make anyone safer, barring this, because these attacks don't happen. And we're yeah. going to talk a little bit more about this link, this patriarchal link and the way that it's used, um, this nexus of sexism and racism a little bit later on. But yeah, getting back to, to your point. The, the Then Bill... Uh, when when Milo was done spewing his hateful bullshit, my, uh, Bill turned to his panelists and said, "Hey man, what do you think about weirdos peeing?" And I was like, "Exactly, you're just going to bandwagon on what you're trying to be 14 now, Bill." And, what and, a cunt! And, yes, and you tried to compare him to Hitchens. Oh my god! Oh my god, that was even worse. It was yeah. <laughs> And you remind me of a young, uh, you know, gay. gay Christopher Hitchens. Fuck off. Fuck her right off. That's just like the biggest, you've just bent over and take a shit on Christopher Hitchens at grave. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Hitchens uh. would chew him up and spit him out with oh, the same easy. accent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's one of the actual smart British guys. I mean, I had some problems with some of the shit that, that Hitchens said. Yeah. But there's no denying that he's a very, well, he was a very, very smart man, you know, and he, he you know, college graduate for one <laughs> i don't think milo has i think he's a dropout to be honest yeah, he dropped out twice i think yeah oh my god you know and he he didn't use his platform to to bully and abuse and harass people he you know even the people that he really hated like you know when he'd go one-to-one -one with with people like william lane craig or whatever he he would argue he, he argued the 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 things that they were arguing about he didn't say oh you guys just have low iqs <laughs> right. yeah exactly no, it's oh, it's the case. You know, you can be a college dropout and be brilliant. Yeah, oh, totally. But you can also be a college dropout because you're intellectually lazy, and it's easier mm -hmm. to just troll people online and get famous doing yeah. it. And you know, yeah. the critique that people like George Will in the United States and other American conservatives who were conservative back when Reagan was around, those mm -hmm. there is an elite type of Republican who thinks of themselves as a very deep intellectual with a philosophy, a conservative philosophy that grounds and frames the governance of the country. But Milo doesn't have an ideology. He is he's not even a provocateur. He's just a troll. And that's why, again, he doesn't belong on campuses because his speeches basically are garbled nonsense with insults to various groups thrown in. He's just being an edgelord. He's not making anyone think. There's no philosophy behind his positions. There's no coherent ideology. There's no guidance on how to shape policy. It's just about hating people and shaming, you know. And I look, when it comes to stuff like if you think that, yeah, pedophilia should be shamed. Shame does have a role in culture, right? Yeah. But if you're shaming people because they're trying to get, attain a level of uh, equality with other members of the human species that's not a good reason to shame somebody that's not a valid secular western a notion of human equality that just that being matches an asshole. yeah <laughs> you're just being a big fucking asshole <laughs> yeah yeah the yeah. um i watched uh have you seen dick coughlin's videos on milo uh, yes there's, there's, yeah they but go ahead and summarize pent. it for those who haven't and then people can go and check it out uh you know uh there was just so much good stuff. There were, um, what did he say? The thing that I was thinking of specifically was his point in the video where he says, you know, Milo, uh, Milo's whole thing was, um, you know, shitting on other people and calling that free speech, being like, I have a right to say absolutely anything I want about anyone and they just need to take it. That's, free speech and that's how it should go and now but now that the tables have turned and he is saying you know he's oh you know people are taking my words out of context you know i i don't actually advocate for pedophilia now i've lost my job and my my book and all that sort of shit and and and, and dick's like well, well no you can't espouse this this idea of you know words they're just words they're not important just get over it kind of thing for you know when it works for you and now that the words have come back to bite you in the ass 
expect us to have some sympathy for you. No, fuck that. You know, I, yeah, and I thought that was. Yeah. Very well put. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. And on the Bill Maher appearance, he does say that words can't physically hurt you. That's yeah. That was, that was the thing he said. He, he was I'm, like, yes, that, that's the, and, and Dick said, that's the biggest fucking straw man ever. No one is saying that words can physically hurt you. That's not the point. You're just, you're, you're, that's a huge straw man. No one's saying that words can't hurt you. They are saying that words have an impact and that, you know, they, you know, do things people do things because of words people people you know religious people do things because they believe so everyone believes in a thing and that is because of words words tell you those things that's what words do they have meanings and they have an impact that's not that's not saying that they're physically hurting you or something but to say that words don't have an impact is is, is beyond ignorant you know I, I, I and he learned that very quickly within a few days yes. Exactly. Yes. One of the big narratives in the pro Milo camp is using his identity um, as a victim of sexual abuse in the way that Milo uses his identity of being Jewish or being raised Jewish and his identity as a gay man to mm. hide his, his hurling his insults and mm. accusations at members of the Jewish community and at LGBT the LGBT community. And one of the things that I've been asking is when did Milo talk about himself as a, a, a victim of sexual abuse? And if it was before then, then you know what, if he apologized for what he said or took back and retracted those consent comments before this all kicked off, I will hold up my hands and say, you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm, he is, yeah, he's a victim. He's not just using it. Um, and maybe he was dealing with it badly in the past. But if the first time those two concepts, regretting his comments about consent and identifying as, you know, himself as having been a, a victim of sexual abuse, as opposed to the, what he described as being the instigator or the predator in one mm -hmm. in, in the podcast, then I just, you know, it, it seems to me he's just hiding again behind an identity and using identity politics while at the same time criticizing people for using identity politics. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, you, uh, that, that's like that whole Schrodinger's douchebag thing. You, you know, okay, you're only saying these things now that you've been caught. And I don't really think it works that way. I mean, he, he clearly says in the video with, with Joe Rogan that he was the predator. You know, he's saying he instigated some of this stuff. And then he says in another video, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he says that 13-year-old is old enough to give consent because now he's a teenager. Yeah, which, so I, you know, I watched a bit of the Joe Rogan, but I watched more of the Drunken Podcast. And in there, right. what he said was that um, some kids, I, I think that he described himself as being at 13, sexually yeah. mature. He was then trying to distinguish between like older kids who are in puberty or going through puberty and those who haven't. And those sexually mature kids can give consent. And he was saying that he was an example uh, of that. Uh, yeah. I and, don't... You, I mean, the, the, in in my mind, there's 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 kind of two different things. Uh, you know, teenagers exper experimenting with teenagers. You know, like uh, so teenagers being with each other, but then you've got, uh, you know, emotionally mature adults taking advantage of teenagers. That, and those are two different things. And the what and, and Milo is advocating for the second one. Right. You know? That's important because what he was actually reacting against, if you watch the Drunken Peasants podcast bit, he talks about this arbitrary and oppressive or something notion of consent that the left mm -hmm. wants to put on. It doesn't take into account the variation <sighs> of people's ability to give consent. So again, he was being provocative, you know, in reaction in order to shit on liberals. Um, but, yes. you know, it isn't an arbitrary notion of uh, consent. Legal consent by states is not uniform because there isn't a magic number that we know on this particular day and you know, when you turn 15 years six months and two days old then boom you, you know you, you have the capacity of giving consent for sex you know? yeah. so again it's an attempt yeah. to criticize that really led into this him you know walking into this self-made disaster and um uh the idea that he okay so because because like you say the narrative seems to be uh he was abused as a child therefore he's totally okay and doesn't deserve the shit that he's getting but uh, um 
He, Can I just say, oh, sorry, sorry, before, but, and if he had sex when he, he was forced to have sex when he was 13, I agree. He was abused. And, sure, you know, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah totally, just to say, totally. I don't want to dispute yeah. that he's a victim of sexual assault as a child. That, that's not the issue here. It's more about how he's dealing with it as a grown up. So. Exactly. So, you know, uh, okay, he was abused, right? Okay. But he is using his platform or he, he you know, uh, no, he's not using his platform. I mean, he hasn't been going around spouting this, but he's said it in a bunch of cases and hasn't retracted it. Um, advocating for this, you know, fucked up idea about consent with teenagers, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think that he was abused as a kid is an excuse for that. I, you know, okay, maybe he's fucked in the head or whatever, but that still doesn't excuse. And, and also actively, uh, uh, you know, um, concealing the names of people that he knows, uh, you know, abused other children, but he doesn't want, he, he won't tell anyone who they were. Um, he won't reveal that information. And, and so he's, he's, he's actively protecting uh, child rapists, which is fucking abhorrent as shit. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, Milo uses people's past and their identities and, and the things, you know, to, uh, to target them. You know, he, he will, he will use parts of people's identities and, and the part, the, the, the things they've been through in the past to target and harass and, and bully those people. But it's not okay to do that for Milo. That you know, or or at least, I mean, I don't think it is. I don't think that people should do that at all. But the fact that it's it's kind of hypocritical again that that you know you can go through your life doing this to other people, and then as soon as it happens to you, you're like, oh, oh, oh take pity on me. Oh, fuck off, you know. It's this is why I am deeply skeptical of his suddenly prefacing things by saying I was sexually assaulted as a child and you uh -huh. know, using this, he wasn't talking like that before, you know, and he apologized, uh -huh. which is also, you know, very, but we're kind of getting ahead of the story. Because... Paul, Joseph Watson, Paul Joseph Watson made a tweet <laughs> where he said that Milo, Milo has exposed three pedophiles in his time. That's more than any other journalist. And I was like, what? <laughs> Have you heard of the Catholic Church scandal and the exactly. spotlight? Um, hello, Oscars <laughs> last year. And then, and then someone uh, someone tweeted. He obviously hadn't heard of um, what's that guy's name? The To Catch a Predator guy. <laughs> oh, Whatever Joe his Walsh? name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Catch a Predator. <laughs> oh, obviously, that's, that's, that's I think something else. I think that was like America's Most Wanted or something or whatever. But yeah, what it's like Chris something. But yeah, it's like come on, man. You can you focus? Like, and one of the one of the quote unquote pedophiles that he quote unquote exposed was Sarah Nyberg. That's not you yeah. he she's not a pedophile. That's right. that's perpetuating harassment against a, a, a trans woman that was just made up because she criticized Gabigate. Fuck you. Fuck you royally, you son of a bitch. Well you know? he's basically just um slandered her in the press. I mean she could sue yeah. him for that. Oh my God. Just because the it's biggest entirely false bag. accusation. Yeah. So mm. Anyway, but on a Friday night with Bill Maher, he was riding high, and he was mm. then invited to CPAC, a conservative conference that takes place. Did that anyway. happen after Bill Maher? Like, um, what, what's his invitation? I heard that they were trying to get him before Bill Maher, but they announced mm. it after. They kind of confirmed it and announced it after. Now, I've seen some places that said he was going to be a keynote, and other places that he wasn't going to be a keynote, but he was going to be on the same stage as Trump and Pence and... Yeah, it's Kelly a pretty huge Kelly. conference, right? Yeah, Jesus. massive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what happened was a conservative group, small C, kind of well, conservative Republicans, but like traditional, shall we call them Republicans, who sure. don't like Milo and don't like Trump and don't like the direction mm. that the party is going with the alt-right and the populism, mm. started to release... Um, things have been on the internet for a year, things that Kevin, actually the video inside the the expose video, they were responding to something that Kevin had done with um, SJW 101. They had done. Yeah, like, I was a little confused by that. The, the you know, the, the picture, which has got Kevin's face on it, which is, was on like the yes. Daily Mail or whatever. <laughs> the Daily was Mail. That, was, the, was that picture... Because it was from the Drunken Peasants podcast, though, right? It wasn't. Kevin wasn't on that podcast. No, was they were playing his video on the podcast. Oh wow! Well, okay. Oh okay. Ah, uh, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, so no, hold on. So they were playing 
Kevin's expose video of the other time, the, the Joe Rogan thing. Right. So SJW 101 had made a video and then Kevin yeah. made a video referencing it and clipping it and reacting to it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, Kevin had, had done something on TJ. So I think this was TJ's. I'm speculating now. This is pure speculation uh, on my part. TJ was going to try to get back at Kevin. So if you watch the drunken peasants, they actually like say that Kevin's video is slanderous or slander or something. Oh. And asked Milo if he'd seen it. And Milo said his assistants had watched it, but he hadn't watched it. Yet. <laughs> and then they started to react to it. And it was then it had the Joe Rogan segments in it. And Milo started uh, ripping on that. And that's where he said things about being 13 uh, and uh, made the joke about the priest again and all that. So it's like a huge video inception. <laughs> that's, yeah. how that's really funny. Wow. I, yeah. I actually, I actually, I actually talked with Milo very briefly once, like on a Twitter thing. Like he, he was, when he was just still a, a Twitter edgelord, um, he was tweeting some stuff and I, I did my usual um, kind of thing to that. And he replied to me, and we had a little back and forth. And so I, I just remembered that that I that I'd actually interacted with him. It was it was interesting. <laughs> Your ten minutes of Milo fame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, continue. Sorry, you, um, you were saying conservatives, um, small conservatives. Right. So group. conservatives, yes. And the, this started circulating. Um, well, I had uh, seen a, a posting from Kevin where he was uh, saying something along the lines of. Uh, Jake Tapper just tweeted something that has part of my video in it and he was really excited. So I went to check it out and yeah, yeah the video segment started to circulate in the mainstream media rather than just like on the YouTube inner circle. Yeah. 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 Hot fire. And then we started to see the cascade of events. So how was it for you, Michael, watching Milo's <laughs> real time tumbles? Yeah. Um, it was cool because I, I remember seeing I remember seeing that video of Kevin's I think when it came out maybe, um, because I remember I remember someone commenting it was funny it was a it was a girl that I knew from high school she commented on one of my one of my videos about Sargon and uh, and she was saying about how she was thanking me for for introducing her to Miley Yiannopoulos. Um she would not heard of him before and I was just like are you kidding me the guy's a motherfucking douchebag and she's like no he's not and then I was like here's some evidence that he supports pedophiles and then she went off this oh, big and it was Kevin's it. video it, it was Kevin's video yeah, yeah yeah so I remember seeing that when it kind of came out and thinking holy sweet Jesus and then I, I suppose it kind of just faded into the back of my mind because you know it, he he didn't really reap anything from it so um but yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 it was great. Like I remember waking up and seeing you guys had posted about how he'd lost his book deal, and I I hadn't heard about the CSPAC thing. Uh, I I hadn't heard that he was going to it, but then I I heard after the fact that he wasn't going to it. So that was you know, and then I saw the thing about uh, a Breitbart potentially dropping him. Um, and so all this all of the stuff just kind of came one after the other, and I was like, wow. Um, but uh like like my initial reaction was like okay that's fucking fantastic but then my my kind of secondary reaction was you know okay it's great that that he's got what's coming to him but why is it only happened now i mean it it just kind of shows that these people were okay with him being transphobic and a bully and you know like the thing that he did to leslie jones the thing that he did to the trans woman at his at his um his talk thing you know, just continue, you know, being a huge fucking sexist, racist piece of shit. They were totally fine with all that stuff. Absolutely no problem. That's that's fine. Let's, you know, he's he's oh, a free speech minded, but now that he's he's also advocating for Pilipino, that's that's too far. We can't, you know, we, we can't allow that. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's good, but it's just kind of silly that that uh, that it had to be this that, that did it, you know, not that the other stuff doesn't matter. You know, I was I was a little bit like, well, come on, guys, what's your, you know? Yeah, the other thing too that struck me was that there was sort of a mainstream reaction, and then there was the, the underground reaction. You know, the reaction yeah, yeah, yeah. of communities that we know about. The mainstream right. reaction was um, a lot of people because I I have to say there was so much Schadenfreude for me over oh, the God. whole time, uh, and I'm yeah. so glad that he didn't quit the same day that he got his book deal taken away and his thing, because it just dragged it out for like another 24 hours, <laughs> and I knew he was gone, I knew, because they weren't doing anything on the story, and they came out, like the, the senior editor came out condemning him, I'm like, he's so out of there, but he wants to jump before they can push him, so that's fine, like yeah. I want to watch him jump, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, um, but with, so in the mainstream thing, there was in the comments of articles, because it was, you know, like the top story in Politico for a few hours, and Huffington Post and Washington Post oh. had a few things on it. And a lot of people were like, I'd never heard of this guy until Bill Maher, which made me so happy. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I kind of forget we live in a bubble, you know, where there's his own, yeah, our own little dramas and discourses. Yeah, it's kind of weird, eh? Um, I, uh, so have you heard this 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 rhetoric of it's it's the left's fault yeah. that Milo is so popular? It's it's the left's fault because they tried to censor him and he's so popular now because of the fucking the left. Have, have you heard this? Well, um, I've also heard that the left was behind this. That this was a coordinated um, attempt oh, by of course it was. Um, <laughs> by soft by soft Republicans and uh, the the liberals to get me get at milo when his exposure was highest and that's that so, so what you're saying is that they were politically smart yeah they, <laughs> he they told them they, a knife he they told knife people in, yeah in january they just like caesar it was the ides of whatever <laughs> day it was that he announced the 21st of february was the ides of march for him <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly <laughs> they they show i, I don't really understand that they they showed people the things that he had said and that's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Because they timed it so well. How, it was obviously a no. conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. How dare you tell the world the things that he said? How, that... how, how dare you make Milo go on two different podcasts and say outrageous things and then get a lot of exposure um, and anger a lot of people and then a whole bunch of people, you know, people on the right take the initiative um, to do it and liberals just sit back and get their popcorn. Typical, typical video game feminism. That's you know, yeah. it's all Anita's fault. That's what it is. It's all but Anita's so fault. there's a lot of um, who is this Milo guy? But um, if you okay, so like me on Twitter, I actually like searched Milo just to see what people were saying about him, and I could see right. Sargon was talking about him a lot because there were a lot of tweets addressed to Sargon in the latest ones. But oh, people Sargon, say Jesus. really weird things in defense of Milo, like the age of consent in Germany is 14. Uh, well, yeah. So like the sun is seven um, light seconds away from the earth or whatever minutes. I knew Straight it was seven and mouth. I knew it was like <laughs> years or seconds or something. Yeah. But Eight um, minutes, Christy. Eight what minutes, does this have on. to do? <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> the age of consent yeah. in Germany doesn't matter when he was living in Britain where the age of consent yep. is 15. And so it was, and, and the defense, uh, people saying that he should be able to talk about this in whatever way he wants. Okay, so if Milo, because he was a, an addict, and, and I actually agree with this point, but the thing is, they only apply it, they apply it to him. If he has a specific experience as a victim of sexual abuse in, in his childhood, then he has, yeah, a, an ability to talk about his experiences in a way that other people can't. Um, but then so do people who get, um, have their family members shot by the police. And women who um, experience rape culture on campus because um, athletic departments allow people accused of rape and domestic violence to keep playing, playing football. Mm. You know, so everybody's, if you're going to apply that logic to Milo, then you, it has to go out to everybody. It's great how, um, how caring they are about the victims of abuse now. <laughs> You know, like they're so, they're so, they care so much about victims of abuse. Why, why are you guys not caring about a victim of abuse? Yeah, because you, you guys talk about victims of abuse all the fucking time. You know, or, and you definitely, uh, you know, uh, consider the experiences and feelings of people who have ha who've been abused in the past. That's something you guys do a lot, right? Or but, more recently, and applied to the YouTube community, right? The Wooly Bumblebee had that incident. Mm, there are police reports mm, that she filed. Mm. And once that was out there, Bearing fans started saying, well, let's show us the police reports. We demand to see the evidence. Nobody's asking Milo to prove he was a victim mm. of sexual abuse. It's listen and who, believe there. I, I watched a video. What the hell? Who, oh, it was, it, was, it was by Kevin. Kevin. Kevin did his video about Chris Ray Gunn. And uh, this idea that when someone comes out as a victim of abuse or, or, or whatever – that you need to be ultra skeptical. Otherwise, there'll be all these false rape accusations that'll happen if we're not super ultra rational and skeptical about uh, a thing. And Kevin's point was fantastic. No, you don't mm -hmm. have to be that. That's not your job. That's the job of the policemen and the investigators who are investigating that crime. You need to be a decent human being and uh, th th do exactly what Anita said. Listen and believe when someone comes to you and says, I have been... A victim of abuse that's what listen and believe was about just 
accepting the fact that they are telling you this story and be a decent, empathetic, compassionate human being and uh, let them be. <laughs> Don't be like, sorry, uh, where's the evidence that you, uh, well, you know, I need to see t dates and times and police reports and all that. No, the, <laughs> you don't need to see that stuff because you just need to shut up and, and be nice to this person. You know, you, you being skeptical about it is not going to change, you know, being skeptical or not skeptical of this person's thing is not going to change the investigation or whatever, you know? So, you know, when, when someone comes to you and it, like I say, this is what the, the words listen and believe were, this is the context that Anita was initially using them in was when a victim of online abuse or bullying or harassment or, or uh, indeed abuse in real life comes to you and confides in you, uh, with this information that it, for one, it's taken a big step to do that for them in the first place. So rather than looking at them and going, nah, mate, I don't believe you. Fuck off. Just be a decent human being and just bring them in and be a nice person. You know, yeah, that's, and this that's was what, what Baring was trying to, what Baring fans, when they tried to defend what Baring did in terms of impersonating a person who had been, who said that they were um, physically and sexually abused these um, people try to defend it by saying, well, you know, Steve should have been more skeptical and he should have not believed the person right away. He should have doubted the story. Like, no, it was, it's an advice show, right? Mm -hmm. So the premise is people are writing in for advice. If you treated every single person like they're on trial, then it's, you're not giving advice. You're giving them her You're just hassling them. And what, what negative thing is going to come from a person uh, you know, believing your, th you know, obviously if there's like really big, you know, signs that, that there's something's not quite right, you know, but that, that'll be something that a police investigation will pull up. And because the, 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 uh, there's a chapter about false accusations in the book, Asking For It by Kate Harding. And she talks about two specific cases of false rape accusations and, and the way that, that proper police investigation brought those things to light um and so you know this idea that there's there's like a spiteful hateful woman running around trying to destroy the lives of men by claiming that they've been raped when they have when they actually haven't it's just bullshit you know um yeah and and when that happens it takes you know you can't just make the accusation and everyone's going to believe you and, and then the guy's going to go to jail. There's going to be an investigation and you have to continue to lie and then you have to check, you know, your people, there are other people that would have been involved, so they have to be story, you know, and that stuff comes to light once there's a proper investigation has applied to it. But you as a person, like a friend or whatever, uh, you know, it's your you're, it's not your job, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like I say, if there's like a glaring thing, you know, you could you could tell the police about that. Be like, hey, you know, you don't have to point at the person. And be like, you're fucking lying, piece of shit. You could you could you can find the police investigator or whatever and be like, hey, man, you know, I love my friend or whatever, but I feel like there's some things that aren't quite right with this story here. This is what I think. You know, nothing wrong with that. Sure. So since we're on the topic of um, <laughs> <laughs> ways that Sorry, uh, no 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 <laughs> no I understand I'm just trying to segue this into the next segment which is totally. um, it's called, you know selective outrage um, or times when um, things aren't applied fairly so when we talk about uh, rape and then issues of false rape allegations there is an area in society where rape allegations are accepted pretty much on their face and sometimes in, before there's any evidence to support it. And that is um, the constant reoccurrence of a nexus between sexism and racism, where white women in particular are discussed in terms of being protected from whatever non-white males are the group, the out group. So hmm. you could look at this. It's, it was a really common theme in American in, in American racist practices to um, you know always have this idea of the black man raping the white woman. Um, men were executed in, in lynch mobs for just the accusation of that hmm. kind of thing. 
And we see it also, I think I would argue, with the transphobia. The idea mm. that the issue of, of having uh, the, the using the bathroom for the gender with which you identify it goes for men's and women's bathrooms, but the entire discussion is framed in terms of protecting women and children. But of course, yeah. women, what are you protecting them from, right? And we had recently a German, big, big, huge German newspaper retract a story that had alleged uh, sexual assaults by Muslim or immigrant men. I can get up the act actual details here on New Year's Eve this year. And the fact is it was a completely false story. So here I'm looking at the New York Times. I'll put a link to this in the description box below. Bild apologizes for false article on sexual assaults in Frankfurt by migrants. The German mass circulation daily Bild has emphatically apologized to its readers for an article that said a mob of Arab men had sexually assaulted women on New Year's Eve in a Frankfurt restaurant after the police said that an investigation had failed to turn up any evidence. The accusations carried echoes of, a genu of genuine attacks on New Year's Eve a year earlier. Um, a spokesperson for the prosecutor said Thursday that they had opened a preliminary investigation of two people suspected of fabricating a crime. So just a little note here as well on uh, data on migrant crime. German's federal police compiled migrant crime statistics for 2015 and released a report in June as part of efforts to calm a heated debate. Migrants committed a smaller share of crimes than their proportion of the overall population. In terms of all crimes, the share of foreigners, including migrants, among Germans, roughly 81 million people, that would include me, I guess, I'm an, uh, you know, <laughs> is less than 10%, but proportionately far fewer of the roughly 2 million people investigated for all crimes committed in 2015 were migrants, just 6%. When it comes to violent crimes, of the 2,721 crimes that ended in a death, migrants were responsible for about 9%, and if the 1,683 cases of sexual abuse, including rape, they were responsible for about 5%. Again, in the population, uh, the share of foreigners, including migrants, is 10%. So, uh, I don't know if um, Croton T will be doing a video on that. <laughs> yeah. But your thoughts on this um, this sort of feminist, I guess it would be a critique. It's a, it's also, you know, a, a rights, a, a racism critique of, of discourse when it comes to othering uh, men within uh, a male society. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Well, I think it's quite telling. Um, I mean, there was a big outcry from various people um, thinking of Paul Joseph Watson for one. Uh, uh, Black Pigeon Speaks. You know, people people saying about um, this. I, I think Sargon did as well. You know, that there's there was these huge gang rapes on New Year's Eve in New York. You know, thousands of Muslim men, you know, gang raping women in yeah in and it was Bologna. mass sexual assaults and from what i've yep. seen there's been at most three rapes reported if people wanted to cite newspapers under belief beneath for higher numbers but three reported rapes but then yes mass sexual assaults including grabbing and, and other sort of physical contact but now we're so th this is the same thing we're talking about right that this is actually Hello, false yeah. this is yeah, there were no mass rapes. There were multiple rapes. But the idea that somehow hundreds of women were raped that night is just a lie. Again, there were three allegations that I saw from newspaper reporting, and I haven't seen any higher numbers since. But the other ones were things like grabbing breasts, grabbing buttocks, and then women were robbed while they were being grabbed. So it was like a a con job. They were, you know, physically assaulting you know, cr a criminal con job, but it was um it was not mass rapes. Right. Okay. But hold on, the, this article from the, that's that's talking about the the retraction the, of of the people making shit up is that a different? So that situation? was from earlier this year, and it was alleged to have happened in Frankfurt. Ah, so okay. Was, right. So Sorry, there were the real attacks. About... Yeah, there were the real attacks about a year ago. But then this one about in Frankfurt saying that a mob of Arab men had sexually assaulted women in a restaurant was entirely false. Right. Okay. Gotcha. 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 That makes sense. Sorry. Um, but yes, <laughs> I I live in Cologne, so I'm co Cologne centric. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, the 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 thing that that gets me is the selective outrage, like the being outraged at these um, these stories, 
but only because you can use it as an as a piece of ammunition against feminism to say, hey, why are feminists not talking about this thing? Why, you know, look at all these. Is it because they fucking love Islam people? They're repulsive, you know, they're letting Islam off the hook because you know Islam, the rabbi Islam, fucking, you know. So they they're using it as a as a tool to shit on feminism and on Islam and all this sort of stuff. They 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 would not, and they are not. And, and in fact, some cases are like actively um, uh, saying that it doesn't happen, be outraged about uh, rape culture in the West. You know, like Christy was saying about um, uh, college football, you know, people getting uh, women or, or girls getting getting raped because, you know, uh, uh, people who are accused of abuse and stuff in the past are still allowed to stay and play college football or whatever and, and you know. So and all the shit kind of goes under the radar. I read this article about a fucking um, uh, a guy who was working for the Olympic um, medical department or whatever, and he was accused of all these, you know, sexual assaults and stuff on women who who yeah. who were. I can patients link to that in the description box below too. Yeah. Um. There, there's there's so many. There's 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 endless stories and 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 um cases of this shit happening all the time. But it only gets brought up by these people when they can use it as as a thing to attack feminism or attack Islam with, you know. Uh, and it's like, you know, it kind of it falls on 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 deaf ears when you're gonna, uh, for me anyway, or you haven't got a leg to stand on when when you don't care about this shit. 99% of the time. It's the same with like people crying about racism, you know, oh shit, MTV is so racist or in Netflix is so racist. But you're only caring about it now because you're this is this is a perception because it's not actually racism against white people, but now that it's racist against white people, now you're caring about it, you know? You don't care about the 99% of the uh, of the rest of the time when, you know, black people and people of color and immigrant, uh, sorry, well, yeah, immigrants and 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 other you know minority cultures, who are facing racism every day of their lives, and they struggle through their lives because of the continued systemic and institutionalized racism. But you don't care about that shit. That that, that doesn't matter. All that matters right now is that there's a there's a show on Netflix called Dear White People. It's the biggest fucking travesty to have ever happened you know i i just i i don't know what come on man you kidding me <laughs> yeah no i there's been a, a tragic uh, i think spike in uh, attacks on jewish community centers around the u.s mm. and i know they're still investigating a fire at a mosque that was um i, I don't know if it yeah, was well, arson. Uh, yeah but the jewish I mean, community what about there. the Synodic. What about the, the the attack on the Muslim uh, church in uh, so the, the mosque in in Canada? You know, yeah. the, so a guy, uh, pretty sure it was a white dude, went into, yeah. you know, and 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 shot up this place. I'm just trying to find a tweet right now, um, of like Blair White, uh, tweeted about this. Uh, it was a it was a video on. The, on Mike, it was a, it's a, a MIC, the 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 um the the news outlet, and they had a video about migrant crime, and I'm trying to find it, but she'd just taken like a screenshot of the first thing and was just like, oh, this is fucking bullshit, and I'm like, did you even watch the rest of the video and what it was trying to say? You talk, I'm gonna find the 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 tweet because okay, I think it's, right. it's pretty indicative of what's going on. Yeah, well, there was I think it was John Oliver, if I'm remembering correctly, because I watch a lot of news segments over the course of a week who brought up this guy who had been arrested by the FBI because he was planning on planting bombs in Target stores along, I believe it was the East Coast of the United States, because he wanted their stock prices to fall so he could like make money shorting it or something. And it was like an older white guy, you know, um, and that that's an act of terrorism. It might be economic terrorism, but it's still terrorism. And that's not getting play. But of course, if he wasn't white, you better believe that that would have been a top story around the country and Trump would have been tweeting oh, yeah. about it. So yeah, this, um, the way that they frame anything to do with Islam or Muslims in a very black and white way, while also whitewashing, you know, um, anything yeah. that's been done by members of their group. 
I found the tweet. <clears throat> um, so so Blair uh, tweeted this out. It says, wow, at Mike. Um, not me, MIC, I'm talking about here. Uh, yeah, I can't believe Blair never tweets at me. Actually, she did tweet at me once because I was I called her out on something and she had a big, uh, a big uh, attack on me for a little bit there. She kind of spazzed out. Anyway, um, I believe, I can't believe one of the most likely to be murdered by a, uh, I can't believe one. Oh, okay, one in the. Okay, I can't believe one is more, more likely to be murdered by a member of the largest demographic. Guess we can stop caring about terrorism. And she's taken a screenshot of the um, of the first little image from the video, which says you're more likely to be killed by a white man than a Muslim terrorist. And I was like, d- d- <laughs> did you watch the rest of the video? Because the video talks about. I'm just watching it again now, but um, it talks about uh the 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 guys in that image and why they're on there you know things that they were either planning on doing like there's there's one guy here who was planning on oh that they, they, they've arrested three men who were planning to uh to like go and shoot up a mosque um and then there's another guy who uh was he arrested the uh, arrested um, a guy in South Carolina with ties to a white supremacy group who wanted to commit uh, commit an attack in the spirit of Dylan Roof. Um, so, so it's it's outlining a bunch of these dudes who you know are uh, you know basically terrorists, but they're white, yeah. so we're not talking about them. And then it's just it's going on about okay, the the chance of dying by an attack in an attack by a non-US terrorist is only zero point zero 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 three percent. And then it says zero refugees from the countries Trump tried to ban have carried out a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. And it says then, but white men were responsible for 64 percent of mass shootings in the U.S. since 1982. Yeah. And so it seems like clear, uh, clear Blair has completely missed the point or is just misrepresenting it on purpose because she. Yeah. I mean, the reason I laughed when you initially read it out was because I'm like, oh, no, are you offended by facts? (laughs) <laughs> oh, you poor special snowflake! Does a does a yeah. does an objective fact offend yeah. you? Yeah, well, I it's mean, not because the thing is that that it makes no sense because she's saying, uh, you know, we should stop caring about terrorism. No, because that's not no, the, what yeah. the video is saying. The video is saying that you're very unlikely to be to be killed by. Uh, um, I mean, it kind of it's a little bit deceiving, I think, because it switches the. It says that. 64% of mass shootings were committed by white men and then it switches to um you are you are this likely to you know this amount of percent to be so it's 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 switching the focus of the of the statistic which is a little bit misleading i think but the point still kind of stands you know you've you've it's 64% of mass shootings in the last 20 whatever years were committed by white dudes and none of and so the, I think the main point of the video is that this would have come out just after Trump issued the the Muslim ban. Mm-hmm. Um, that none of that there've been no terrorist attacks from those countries. So I mean, you know, that's that's not saying we should not care about terrorism. That you've just blatantly misrepresented the whole point of the video. Right. You know? We're supposed to be evidence led, right? And we're supposed yeah. to use reason. And if we're going to be using reason as applied to evidence, then we need to have a proportional amount of concern based on the statistics presented. So what I'm kind of in a roundabout way saying is um, you have to, you can't be this incredibly hair on fire outraged over a possible threat from a country where no terrorist attacks have ever come from those migrants. When we have this whole population over here that for some reason goes on mass shooting sprees and we really need to figure out what's going on in that population so that we can stop that. But no, 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 no. We're, we're being, it's white genocide. We're targeting white dudes uh, and, and, and vilifying white men because you know, the the, fuck off, you know, it's not, we're not saying that all white men are, uh, you know, mass shooting murderers. That's not the case. Uh, the, but the fact is, like the cold hard fact is that sixty four percent of mass shootings since nineteen eighty two are done by white dudes. Let's so just say, when- if you were an FBI profiler and there was a mass shooting, you're you're going to say that you're going to profile first thing. It's probably a white male, yeah. because th- that is the pop that because that's where the population of people who commit those crimes come from more than 
women or people from other groups. Now, is that saying it's guaranteed to be that? No, but that would be the first thing that you would sort of like to narrow down the population. That would be your first assumption. And then you get more evidence and you would refine it and maybe you would change that. But that's the profile. Yeah. Yeah. So the selective outrage, I feel, is, is I mean, it, 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 it betrays, um, your intentions because f for me when i talk about these things my intentions are to um to to try and find you know to discuss the issue and try and find solutions to fix whatever problem might be causing these things but it seems like if you're just gonna selectively talk about these things your intentions don't seem to be to do that your intentions are to vilify a certain group of people yes I just, I don't understand why we have to, when we talk about sexual assault and rape, why do we have to co um, carve it up by what the, the religious beliefs of the perpetrator was? Yeah. You know, that's not going to really help us solve the wider problem. We have to look to see, you know, what is going on here. And yeah, different communities or groups might have different issues. I'm perfectly mm -hmm. open to that. You know why? Because I'm an intersectional feminist. Um, and so a nuanced and contextualized analysis of factors and ways that you can engage to education in order to help people understand what consent is, how, what are the laws on consent where you live, um, how can you make sure that you're, you are obtaining consent. These kinds of things mm -hmm. are, are all, we could be having that discussion. Yep. But that's not the discussion, of course, that gets the clicks and the views and the outrage and the uh, anger. That's right. That's right, <laughs> and it's sad. Okay. Yeah, um, the the um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, actually, I think we have covered the three topics that we intended. But is, before we yeah. wrap it up, is there anything else A that you want to talk about, or B that you wanted to mention but kind of didn't get a chance to during the course of the chat? Um. I don't know. I suppose it'd just be interesting to see where, what happens to Milo from this point. Um, you know, oh, one of the one of the things that that Steve said in his video about this, which I thought was really great, was you know, uh, I think we need to be looking as to why he was allowed this platform in the first place. Why why was this abhorrent piece of shit who who espouses all these awful awful ideas and damages people, uh, you know, actively harms other people? in the in the name of his ideology or whatever that might be can that, i that give he, you oh sorry you go for, you go ahead then i'll give you my prediction oh just uh, that that he was allowed you know that that he was that was held up as this this martyr of free of free speech you know the 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 fact that he he was able to get so big by being such a piece of shit that that's you know and and shitting on minorities uh, shitting on trans people and on, and on muslim people and on you know whoever else um you know it, people shouldn't be held up uh as as some sort of you know amazing person when that is the way that they are doing that when you are when you're you know when your method of getting to the top is to just to tear down everyone else then you know fuck that you're you're a piece of shit, <laughs> I, and and so I think we should be people. We need to think a bit more about. That's what uh, that was what I was saying before. Is of of you know it's great that he's got his comeuppance, but only now that it's it it that they didn't care about the transphobia or the racism or the sexism or any of that shit, you know. And I think that we need to something needs to change in that respect, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, my political analysis would be this. Milo is big in a subculture of the United States, you know, the alt-right subculture and people who rub elbows with the alt-right. The wider world or the wider country, at least, you know, um, I, guess I, I, don't, I assume he's going to stay in the, in the States, but I don't know. Um, there, when, what they associated with Milo was just uh, headlines, I think, the average person of students protesting maybe the Berkeley protests where things got a little mm -hmm. bit out of hand. When those things got out of hand, they just were reacting, I think, more to the students because Milo was just someone who was saying maybe main things about trans students and other vulnerable populations. So people didn't really know him other than he was a provocateur, right, or a troll. But when he got on Mar, he got a huge platform 
and he got a lot more attention because mainstream media covered it and reacted to it. And then he had this precipitous fall. So now I think going forward, when Milo wants to go onto a campus, all the students have to do is put his quotes up mm. from any of those two podcasts. And when people see that now and they see the signs, they're going to go, that is a guy who was talking about 13 year olds being able to have sex. He shouldn't be able to speak on a campus. Yeah. And so he, you know, I know there is the idea that no, all press is good press or there is no bad press. But if your name is associated now with condoning even obliquely pedophilia and people have, have their gut reactions, they're going to side with the students from now on whenever they see his name and those signs. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's done. I mean, he'll always have his little fan base, but he's not on Twitter now. So he can't, I mean, minds.com isn't the same because if only alt-right people and people who want to troll go there, they don't have anyone to troll. The, the reason the people are on Twitter. definition of an echo chamber as well. Yeah. And the reason they're on Twitter is because they can get people they don't, who don't, who aren't on minds.com. Yeah, 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 totally. And I'm not going to go there. You're not going to go there. Leslie Jones is, nope. you know, people aren't going to go there because we know what that is over. It's like, yeah. If he's just in his little bubble, he's not going to be able to be as provocative. And if campuses don't let him on because of his comments, and they're perfectly within their rights now because he was kicked out of CPAC, um, and you know, so they... He was suppressed. no platform. Question. Yes, he was, he was no was... platform. <laughs> he was then, he had his book deal taken away, and he, was, he yeah. resigned from his job in disgrace. What does he have to offer a university campus on the idea of radical free speech? I just think the whole free speech thing is fucking ridiculous anyway. I mean, people go on and on about free speech, but they, A, don't understand what the fuck it is. And then B, are, so they're, they're, they're saying a bunch of stuff and supporting a bunch of stuff, which isn't about free speech. You know, people, people say, you know, let Milo speak because of free speech or whatever. And it's like, well, no, you know, saying, you know, free, and again, free, like, like freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. If you're going to be an absolute dickhead, then uh then you deserve what's coming to you you know you 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 deserve to be exposed for the piece of shit that you are you know and have people judge you in that way if milo's press conference had been focused more on retracting his statements and about victimization and the impacts of it and where people could find support and resources and to encourage people who have been through that situation to come forward and to get help and to reach out then I think he really could have redeemed himself, but instead he made it about himself yeah. because he's Milo. Yeah, we'll see. That that just kind of shows that he it, it's not he doesn't really care about the victims or anything like that. He just cares about saying what he needs to say to try and save face, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, he's always going to be on the attack, like Trump. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's always going to be right, and he's always. Uh, mm, how, how does that remind me of? Always going to be right. Mm. Yes. Yes. Alternative uh, facts. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh, God. That whole alternative facts thing, man. I'm just like, what? Because I was reminded of the whole Lugan Presa thing. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, oh, well, when God, he, I remember. Trump actually came out and said that the, the media were the enemy of the American people. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Come on, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> you got to pick your words a little better. <laughs> it just sometimes feels like I'm not living in the right. Like, somehow I got off on the wrong parallel universe. Or Trump one. Yeah. And I'm like, this yeah. isn't right. No, it's <laughs> the more yeah, it's what? This is not normal. No, this is not normal. Uh so hey, I've got a question for you. Cause yep. um I, I, do you guys do carnival or celebrate like uh, Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday anyway, where you got where mm. you are? No, I don't think so. I mean, they have some stuff in Wellington. I know there's a thing called the Cuba Street Carnival, but I don't know if that's related to Carnival or, or anything like that. Um, but I mean, we have festivals. <laughs> okay. Well, because, um, you know, I actually, I was out in the rain today because we have yeah. our carnival in Cologne. It just kicked off. And one of, cool. our, one of the people in our group had was talking about her experience at the Rio Carnival. It's like, wow, that's going to be a very different experience from Germany in February. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> like, totally. You can get away with not wearing clothes um, at Carnival <laughs> in Rio, and you can't do that here. <laughs> not yeah, not if you don't want to get sick. So maybe I've, I've uh, caught something um, from being out in the rain today. But is it, yeah, first day of Carnival is great. Freezing winter at the moment? Is that what the deal is? Sorry, I is missed the first is it freezing winter at the moment? Like yeah, yeah, so it's just coming into it's the end of winter, the just the start of spring, and it was oh, a okay. really sort of drizzly, windy day out, mm. and it's been pretty blowy uh, for most of the day here. I think we had like a high of ten degrees centigrade. Oh man, yeah. So it's been pretty damn hot here recently, but we had a big spout of rain. It's been so dry, like ridiculous dry. Our lawn was just brown from no water or anything and then we had this nice spout of rain so everything's kind of growing back again now uh, but we're heading into autumn i think which is mm -hmm. like my favorite time. i love autumn it's the best uh, well i'm looking forward to the summer so you can send it my way that's fine we'll <laughs> keep the rotation going in the direction it is yeah. does it get really really hot over there um oh so uh, last year i was here i was i missed the three hottest days when it got to like 33 degrees for three days in a row and um it was you know, we don't have air conditioning so oh shit well, see, neither do I, and we have, like, for our summers, that's pretty consistent, like, 30-something degrees for days and days on end, and it's just like, <sighs> I've got this little tiny fan on my desk that, that, you know, and so it's hard to sleep at night, oh, God, it's just the worst, you know, and I'm used to being, like, when I'm on the cruise ship, it being, like, stupid hot, because it's the Caribbean or whatever, but we have air conditioning all throughout the ship, so if you oh, need yeah. to stay on the ship, and it's, you know, it's not death you know but here it's just oh it's it's annoying so yeah when it gets into autumn i can dig it you know totally dig it <laughs> well thank you so much michael for your time and it's always it's always a good time to talk to you we'll talk off air too but is there anything yeah, coming up on your channel or recently released on your channel that you want to plug um i uh, have i got anything planned i mean i suppose just like logical llama I, I do more logical llama things i mean he does and i i i have the platform for him so he 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 gets to you know bludge off my my viewers <laughs> so i I, th I put out of uh uh one of his videos about the milo yeah it was about milo and stuff and about you know so he he had a bit of a talk about that which was nice so you know that's there and then the online abuse thing if you're if you're interested or or are going through something uh you know yeah it, reach the, out the, the, yeah just yeah that's i mean that was one of the main things in that as well is is you know reach out and 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 touch faith it's it's um <laughs> <laughs> <Depeche mode. laughs> uh, yeah just uh, um you know that 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 we you do have friends we can we can uh, you could if you want to you can talk to us and we can we can help you through stuff like that so yeah that that would be my stuff yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I've been Christy. You have been awesome. And so has Michael. <laughs> yeah, baby. And we'll see you again really soon. Oh, oh, no. Ooh. I do remember something coming up. Oh, oh. It, okay. I don't know if this is going to come out before then, but on this Sunday uh, on Periscope, I'm streaming with my friend from my garage. We're going we're gonna to set up our band him and oh. me playing guitar and bass and singing and doing loop pedal beatbox stuff and everything on Sunday. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning in New Zealand. So I think it's Saturday night for a bunch of other people and we're going to be playing and, and streaming on Periscope from my garage. So you can come and you can re request songs and all that sort of shit. So, you know, if you, if you're, if you're up for that kind of thing, it's going to be real fun. So. so is there a link to that, that you can provide me? That I can... Yeah, I, um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I, I'll, I'll on be... your Twitter? Should people check out your yeah, Twitter it'll, for links? Yeah, it'll, it'll be, I'll be linking it on my Twitter. So, um, you know. And are you going to do a pro uh, on your channel? Yeah, I'm going to try and do some, yeah, maybe I'll do a little quick little video on my channel. Yeah, about it. That. Yeah, so it should be real fun. You heard it here first. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yeah. Until next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.